Hello, friends, and welcome to Encouragement for Today. Light from God's holy and precious Word, coming from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in Adel, Georgia. Let me invite you today to pick up your copy of God's Word. Turn with me over to the book of Luke, chapter 2. And I want us to look at verse 30 through verse 32 as our text, verses of Scripture. Now notice what the Bible says here. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And I pray that God would add his blessings to the reading of that wonderful word today. Today, friend, I want to bring to you a thought that uh, I've titled, Resting in Christmas. Resting in Christmas. You know, Simeon was a devout and godly man in Jerusalem during the time of our Lord's birth. Now, Simeon was old in years and had been waiting for the consolation and the hope of Israel. Uh, Then, as he is worshiping in the temple one day, Mary and Joseph walked into the courts of the temple holding the baby Jesus. And immediately the Spirit of God spoke to Simeon's heart to let him know the Messiah was here. Simeon lifted up his arms in praise to God, declaring that he had finally seen salvation. The wait is now over. Jesus was born so that we, like Simeon, could cease from our waiting, our hoping, and our striving. We don't have to live in anxiety or fear anymore. Our loving God sent his Son as a surety for our salvation. The Lord's promises for his people are always certain. God fulfilled his promise to Simeon, and he continues to fulfill his promises to us today. Christmas came as a demonstration of that certainty. Now, friend, let us all rest in Christmas. Let us rest in him. Because, friend, he has provided rest that is indescribable. He has came and and he has given to us this rest. And how thankful we are that our Lord was born into this world to give us rest in our spirit, rest in our souls. So rest in Christmas this year and celebrate Jesus. Friends, I've heard all my life, he's the reason for the season. Yes, he is the reason that we celebrate. But if you stop and you think about it, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he may be the reason for the season, but he came because he loved you. And uh, friend, he still loves you. And I'm so thankful that he came into this world and gave his life on Calvary's cross for my sins. He took a cross that should have been mine. But if you stop and you think about it, we have so much more to praise God for. He may have died on an old rugged cross and was buried in a borrowed tomb, but he didn't stay there. Because, friend, up from the grave he arose. And because he lives, we too can live. So rest in the fact that Jesus lives and Christmas lives on in our world today as we celebrate his birth. Pray with me. Father, we love you so much, and we love you because you first loved us, and you gave yourself for us on an old rugged cross that should have been ours, and uh, you died in our place, and then was buried, and then arose, and you're alive forevermore, 
The Bible tells us because you live, we too shall live if we just believe in you and trust you as Savior. And I pray for that one that needs the greatest Christmas gift of all this year, and that is Jesus. That you draw them by your Spirit, and that even they can experience rest in Christmas. And this I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, God bless you, my friend. Uh, I pray that you and your family, uh, that you have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to you all from uh, my family. And uh, remember, somebody uh, out there may be watching your life. So let others see and hear Jesus in what you say and in what you do. Again, God bless you. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful day.